We'll call to order the Finance Committee meeting for Thursday, October 8th, 2009. If everyone would stand for the invocation of the pledge. Father, we ask blessings on our meeting tonight, Father. Father, we ask you to uh, put your guiding and protective arms around our troops, Lord, overseas and abroad, especially as the escalation increases in Afghanistan. We especially pray for those troops, Father. We pray that decisions will be made quickly to both of them. Father, we ask you, Lord God, to uh, uh, bless our families, bless the administration and our workers here in the parish. And we ask all these things in your son's holy name. Amen. 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 Pledge of to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Valentine. Uh, Madam Secretary, roll call. Please note as absent Councilman Dennis Cullen, Councilman Adrian Thompson. Councilman Kent Shake Snyder and Councilman Dempsey Lambert, all else present. There are no chairs additions, public comment period reminder. If you'd like to speak, please come fill out a card and you'll have three minutes. Next is our sales and use tax report. Ms. Gwen LeBlanc, CFO. Good afternoon, gentlemen. You have your uh, regular sales tax report before you. This is uh, based on the collection month of September, which represents the August sales. And our three sales tax districts are, as usual, Ascension Drainage with their half cent, and sales tax district number one with their one cent sales tax, and sales tax district number two which, with their half cent sales tax. The middle, middle column shows you uh, month to date and year to date. You can see the year to date, and the other, all the three sales taxes are down. Uh, drainage about 5%, district number one 3.2%, as well as district number two. If you look at the last set, that's the comparison to our budget. We're at 75% of the year. You can see that the sales tax district is still 1% over budget, um, nine, almost 10% in sales tax district number one, and 8.4% in sales tax district number two. Um, just for a precautionary measure, represented in the sales tax collections is a, 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 a rather large audit from one of our chemical companies, and cash for clunkers also helped in this period of time. Uh, the Louisiana Reve Revenue Estimating Conference predicts a slow recovery, as we're all hearing from the recession, well into 2010, maybe as long as 2011. Uh, one encouraging note, GM released a, a report that they are recalling a, no, a great number of their employees, which would certainly help one of our petrochemical plants in our parish. On the second page, this is a, a, the, represents the 1% rural sales tax district only. It's a year-to-date report, January to, through September, and it compares 2008 versus 2009, 2008 be, being the blue bar. The red being 2009. It's divided into sectors. The consumer retail is up. You can see 6.7%. Motor vehicles is down 11%. Business to business is up 17.5%. And our petrochemical industry year to date is down 10%. The pie chart on the next page is just a general depiction of where the sources of our re revenues from sales taxes. And this, again, represents only sales tax district number one, our rural sales tax. Uh, you can see the petrochemical industry and their suppliers. They represent about 48 percent of what we've collected year to date. Consumer retail, 34 percent. Motor vehicles, 11 percent. And business to business, 7 percent. And the last bar chart is a uh, depiction of 10 years of uh, actual collections and 2009 to year to date uh, for all three of our sales tax districts. The first one being East Ascension Drainage. You can see the peaks and valleys of collections and our one cent sales tax and the last is our half cent sales tax. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. So Gwen, I guess it's going to sound like a broken record from last month, but um, good news is we're still exceeding our budget in terms of what we had budgeted for revenues. Exactly. Um, but we are not 
not doing as good as our record year of last year. But, exactly. So, okay. I guess it was good. We were conservative with the budget, and I guess we'll talk about that later in the uh, on the agenda as we talk about next year's budget. Budget report. Some right. of our philosophy there for next year too. Anybody have any um, questions, comments? Okay. Thank you. Next, we have our revenue and expenditure report. Amanda Verox, our assistant treasurer. Good evening. This report is on uh, reporting for August 2009. Your operating budget revenues are at 64.79%. Your capital projects are at 31.76%. Your grand total of revenues are at 61.91% at 67% of the year. The items highlighted in green are the items that are below the 67% point at this time of the year. And on page 4 and 5, they give you an explanation of the reasons why. The next page is your expenditures. Your operating expenditures are at 57.82%. Capital project expenditures are at 33.22%. Your grand total Expenditures at 51.54%. And the items highlighted in green on this page are the ones that's over the 67% mark at this time. The next page is um, the charts that compare the budget, which is in green. Your year-to-date operating expenses and revenues are in the yellow, and your capital um, project revenue and expenditures are in blue. The next two pages is just the explanation of the codes that were highlighted in green. And the final page are the, um, all the disbursements over 100000 that were processed in the month of August. And the total was one million one fifty-two eight twenty-seven oh nine. Mr. Chairman. Uh, one comment, if you notice the last disbursement at the end of the 150000 that was a long settled time running lawsuit with the uh, Courthouse East contractor that was finally settled. So Good. that okay. is completed. Right. Thanks. Any questions for Ms. Amanda or uh, Ms. Gwen? Okay. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is our bid item section. Ms. Joan Shivers, Purchasing Manager. Good evening. On August 26, 2009, the Purchasing Department received two proposals for emergency feeding for parish workers during a declared emergency. The proposals were received from Creative Cajun Cooking and Piccadilly Incorporated. After review, the Non-Engineering Professional Selection Committee recommend accepting the proposal submitted by Piccadilly Incorporated. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert and second by Councilman Pat Bell to accept the bid for Piccadilly. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. Next item is our contracts report, CAO Cedric Grant. Councilman, item eight in the agenda, your contracts report lists the contracts that were entered into professional services during the month of September 2009. Um, there's uh, four pages of them. The majority of them are renewals of um, either grant contracts or um, professional services that we have in place. You'll see a few that are for no dollar amount, but for services with, with municipalities and the like. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. There were um, a few items on here, Councilman Lambert and I were talking about earlier, about uh, coordinator for strengthening families program. And co That's, co a grant That's a grant the, thing. It's grant yes, sir, with mental health in the school district. Great. Okay. Councilman uh, Randy Cluett. Yeah, Mr. Grant, on the uh, item number four, the DOTD contract uh, for maintenance agreement, including grass mowing and uh, litter pickup. Yes, sir. That was based on a fairly intensive negotiation with the uh, Department of Transportation. And what we were able to do is mm -hmm. negotiate uh, some additional spraying 
uh, they, they weren't really budging on price, but they, they were willing to give us a bit of additional services for what we do. Uh, I think uh, w the president and I are both concerned about the future of h how grass is going to look with uh, the way they're, they're not really coming up to the plate with how much we're spending right. on this, this service. Yeah, I'm just, I've got a concern as many others on, you know, how much responsibility we're continuing to consume on our state highways. Thank you, sir. Any uh, further questions? One, one quick one. Councilman Lambert. Yeah, Mr. Grant, uh, number 19, 20, and 21, uh, could you explain them contracts for me? All right. 19, 20, 21. Yes, sir. These were small contracts that uh, the Recreation Department did for uh, some grounds maintenance on, on, on those parks. It was a pretty reasonable price for uh, a little bit of extra help to, to, to keep the grass and in, in the facilities in place. Uh, so that was extra besides our own yes, in-house employees? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. That was one time? Yes, sir. Okay. One time deal. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's take it. Yeah. Okay, anything else? All right, we will move on then. Uh, item number nine, Capital Area Legal Services Funding Request for 2010. I believe we had this on there last time and we didn't have anything, any information, and we asked uh, for, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. James. James, James. okay. Uh, appreciate you coming. If you could Thank you fill us in. Me, sir. Um, I have a handout to give to you, which will represent um, a year's uh, work for the last year um, in providing services. And the 23rd JDC uh, was last night in convent giving report to the uh, St. James Parish was still part of the 23rd. But would you see the results that you have here tonight is only Ascension Parish. Like last night, it was only St. James Parish was the client we represented. Uh, in the last, you, we have the total number of clients we serve in this area from 2008 and up to date in 2009 come to a total of 1,590 uh, clients we've represented. If you extrapolate that average on the private sector, the ad average cost of one case uh, is measured about $700. Uh, my average case, handling a case with my staff is about uh, $395. So if you just take $400 a case, you can see the total service was rendered it was $636,000 if we had been charging fees for the representation of people in this area. Um, also in the report, you will see that um, what we give, what you give to help capital area legal services, as well as what other parishes uh, give. All the parishes do give us some donation, except that of East Fleet Center, and uh, they keep asking us for money every time we go up there uh, in East Fleet Center. Um, we, um, uh, you'll see on the, the page, the age and race report, uh, most of the people we represent are between the ages 18 and 59. Uh, a few 18-year-old and less. Now, the 18-year-old the and less is going to increase tremendously this next year. Starting Tuesday, we, we got in almost a 24-hour negotiation with the state. Uh, Chief Justice Kimball uh, put together a task force uh, last weekend. We got the word Tuesday. I was in Lafayette all day yesterday. The, the governor's office, the DS, the uh, DSS is going to turn over all of the representation of the foster children to the full legal service program in the state. Uh, we just finished the, the budget on this a few minutes ago, but it's going to require additional money that, that to, in order to put this program. I plan on putting one of those attorneys here in the Gonzalez office where we have space. They did this because we have space all over the state with the legal service program. Uh, we, we probably sign this agreement tomorrow. We were working yesterday and today trying to get together the numbers. And uh, so that's another service going to be offered here in your, in your parish. Uh, we showed you where uh, we represent clients, but we don't give you the Social Security number and the name of the client. But uh, we can tell you by the codes what kind of cases we handle in your area. Uh, 
This is what we've done in the, in the last year with the funds that you uh, provided to Capital Air Legal Services, which is uh, the best parish we have except East Baton Rouge. We're working on them because they should be done more. We have a task force to work on East Baton Rouge because they're supposed to take care of our rent in Baton Rouge. Um, and it is, that is less than what our rent cost us. When they first started off supporting us, they gave us what it cost to house uh, the legal service office in Baton Rouge. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. One, uh, one last thing I might uh, mention to you. I, I mentioned to Ms. Martinez earlier. We have a building right um, here in the Francois Plaza, Capital Area Legal Services. We own the building. Uh, part of your uh, funding goes to help uh, meet the note on that. Not all of it, but uh, part of it. Uh, we have some vacant space we want to offer free to the, to the jury. And we can arrange so that each jury will have their own council office. We'll, like, we'll, we'll make it comfortable for you if you like the arrangement. Uh, we don't want to try to make any money off of it, but if you like it, for the rest of the year, next six months, it'll be free. If you like the arrangement, then uh, we can negotiate some type of uh, maintenance fee in order to maintain. We have the free space there. You've been good to us over the years and uh, providing us funding. As I said, the rural parish, you, you're the lead parish in supporting us. And... Uh, we can have a conference room downstairs, and you will have an office for each member and upstairs. Mr. Wayne, what was our amount uh, for 2009? Uh, $2,700, $27,000. Yeah. So it's the same amount? No. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Councilman Kluwe. Mr. James, you said you saying that you're, gonna, you're requesting the same amount? Same amount for last year. $27,000? Yes, sir. Uh, in addition, money that this new program is going to cost us, we, we're going to uh, we, 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 we're going to merge with some other funds we have, our operating fund, and put in there. But we plan to staff an attorney uh, 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 here in uh, Ascension Parish. Okay. With no uh, no additional cost for you. I think we can manage it. The figures are kind of jumbled up now because this thing happened Tuesday night, and we've been switching numbers, switching numbers all day going back before to the Louisiana Bar Foundation, who's going to be the headmaster over this program. Mm -hmm. But it's going to uh, provide service to all of the foster care children. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Many times they have legal questions. There's nobody represented. Sometimes they have to be protected from the mama or the daddy. There's sure. nobody to represent the interest of the child. So this is what the Supreme Court is mandated. And we'll be able to provide that service at no different cost within the grant. And the additional attorney, he'll be housed in your quarters? Yes, he'll be housed here in the Ascension Parish. We have three attorneys, one supervising attorney that's in the grant, and two uh, staff attorneys. One would be in Terrebonne, and one in Ascension Parish. So, Gwen, did we budget for this this year or next year? I'm sorry. Uh, in 2010, we budgeted back to our normal 17,000. There was a special request made last year. Last year, you're right. But before this year, we were getting 17,000. Mr. Martinez. Well, we, we had a, a financial crisis last year, and we really did because uh, we lost uh, federal money last year and lost all of our state funding last year. And that was something like uh, our total state funding was almost $275,000 that uh, was vetoed on the last day of the session. We, uh, 2010, we're looking at our budget says 17000 and the request is 27000 at this time. 17 was our normal. Yes, sir. Annual. Yes, sir. 17 last year. Um, the, the only reason I didn't get a chance to talk to Mr. Martinez about it, uh, he went to bat for us last year to get the addition of uh, $10,000. But at that time, we had not lost the state money. And, of course, we'll be happy back with the 17. That's not your fault that we lost the, uh, the, the state funding. Uh, but we do request, if you have it and it's available, uh, to maintain the service we're given uh, at the present time. So, Ms. Yes, Councilman Jessup. So we just asked, right now we're asking for a recommendation to go forward with the 27000 That's what Mr. Wayne is requesting of us. But we have, what Ms. Gwen says is we have 17000 in the in the budget we're about to get review. So if we do adopt this, we just know we'll have to to reallocate some of that, you know, some funding around. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I'm looking at the data. I ain't that too many people come up here and give us the information I'm looking at right now, how many people is being processed through that office. And uh, 
I, I recommend H and that we uh, adjust our budget to approve the twenty seven thousand. Motion. Motion. Motion by Councilman Joseph to approve the twenty seven thousand. Do I have a second? I'll second it for discussion. Second by Councilman Kluwak. Discussion? Councilman Kluwak? Yeah. Um, Mr. Martinez and Ms. Gwynn, we are uh, looking for $27,000 uh, at this time. I know we're fixing to talk about 2010 budget. I know we're tight. And we're, we're looking at freezes and trying not to cut any services. Um, Without going line item through the budget, I don't know where we would grab the extra ten thousand right now. I think it might be a little, you know, it might be a hasty decision at this meeting tonight. If we could do it to seventeen, and then possibly see see at some point where we could get to ten, we could live with that. Uh, Mr. Thank you, President. sir. Yes, we uh, last year, Mr. Wayne came and we said it was going to be a one-time deal uh, to help you out. This year, we cut quite a bit in our budget. Uh, so, you know, I'm hoping that you can keep your 17000 and work with that. Yes, uh, you know, and like I said, when we gave you 27000 last year, we uh, it was supposed to be a one-time deal. Deal. And, 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 and like now, I mean, I'm not giving my people any raises. I'm not doing anything. So, I mean, I'm going to ask the council to, to, to keep the 17000 in unless. Uh, yeah. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a substitute motion that we go ahead and approve the 17000 like what's in the budget for it. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert to a substitute motion for 17000 That was budgeted for 2010 and a second by Councilman Benny Johnson. Um, any discussion? Any objection to the substitute motion? Substitute motion passes. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thank Appreciate you. Mr. you. Mr. Thank you. Whoever can provide your service, just give us a call. Okay, item number 10 approval of the Louisiana State Fire Marshal's requested and required $836.13 change order for providing a Mirtone GSA M270A addressable fire alarm pull station adjacent to the library circulation desk for the new Dutchtown Library, Mr. Henry Chauvin, architect. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we had the fire marshal inspection, and uh, he said that, uh, that we needed this fire alarm pull station, and um, so we got the price from the um, contractor, and it was reviewed by an electrical engineer and found to be in order. And we just recommend going with this to get. I make that motion. Second. Sure. Motion by Councilman Randy Kluwat, second by Councilman George Valentine. Uh, any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. Item number 11 is approval of change order for 12 rain days for, yeah. I don't know how to say that, Juge Construction Juge, Company yes. for construction of the new Dutch Town Library. Okay. Um, we had um, recommend that he get. Uh, Five for March and seven for May, which was a total of 12, which was early on in the project when he was pouring concrete <coughs> over the gas line and everything. And we recommend approving that. So moved, Chair. Second. second. Motion by Councilman Valentine to approve 12 rain days, second by Councilman Kluot. Discussion? Objection? Motion passes. And item 12, substantial completion as of August 21st, 2009, the new Dutchtown Library? Uh, yes, sir. We inspected the billing and on August 21 uh, we recommended substantial completion and uh, Ms. Angel Desotel is here she's moving furniture in right now and they have to staff it with books and I think they're going to try to open sometime in January they're putting the landscaping but uh, so I, I just Second. like to say one thing about the contract he's from Prairieville and we feel that he did an excellent, excellent job, job working mm -hmm. with Miss Angel and coordinating everything. And uh, I mean, it was just outstanding to work with him. Great. It looks good. I drove by the other day. It's good to hear. Congratulations. Okay. We're looking forward to the, uh, the grand opening. Uh, motion by Councilman Valentine, second by Councilman um, Randy, Randy, Randy Kluwat. Randy Johnson. Discussion, uh, Benny? Oh, sorry. Second. The second was Benny Johnson. 
Uh, any discussion? Any oh, objections? Just, one, nope. just want to thank Mr. Chauvin. Um, worked with Mr. Chauvin for a long time, and Chauvin does excellent projects, and uh, he always brings them in under budget, typically. <laughs> and, a, and a good good foundation. Thank you, Henry. Right, Whenever thank you, possible. Yeah. Motion passes. Item number 13 is our last item on the agenda. It is the presentation of the 2009 amended budget and the 2010 budget and request for Parish Council to call for introduction for ordinance. Uh, we have a speaker on this item, Ms. Catherine Goppel. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'll leave my comments to the uh, section of the budget that relates to the Lamar Dixon Expo Fund. The budget is very large, as you know, and it takes a lot of time to review. The, the 09 budget for Lamar was 416000 The operating expenses, including the personnel, will uh, bring that figure close to $1.6 million for this year. Additional money is being drawn from intergovernmental grants and miscellaneous funds. In May, President Martinez and this council did promise us a financial plan to formulate for the operation and maintenance. The committee was formed, but to date, no plan has been announced. The 2010 proposed budget for expenditures at Lamar, apart from purchasing the facility itself, is near $2 million, almost $0.6 million for personnel and more than $1.3 million for general operating expenses. Who will these personnel be, SMG or someone else? Projections for revenue are based on $110,000 from the general fund, $100,000 from sales tax, the 2010 event revenue is projected to increase from 95000 to 600000 Are these events already booked? The RV rental is expected to increase from 100000 to 400000 Are we increasing our rent or adding more hookups? The Office of Emergency Preparedness will contribute 450000 220000 will be allocated from the maintenance fund. Only 200. 15,000 is listed in the 2010 budget from the miscellaneous donations and sponsorships. Where is the other $1 million in private funds that was promised? The cost to purchase the 7 point, uh, of $7.5 million will quickly be overshadowed by the cost to maintain and operate the facility, which is about $2 million per year. Let's not forget there will be replacement costs due to the age of the facility. In the absence of a plan, are we to assume that the proposed 2010 budget is a plan by default? Will Lamar be managed at the mercy of projected revenue or reduced services? In these tough economic times, the long-term success of Lamar will require a financial plan by design, not default. If we do want Lamar to succeed, a plan is necessary, and I would encourage you to get a plan. Thank you. Okay. CFL Gwen LeBlanc. Yes, um, you have before you the, the rather large white book. That's a line item budget that's required by state law. Uh, we've extracted some information from it in a charter firm, which is this blue covered little pamphlet. Everybody has one? So I, I, I will lead off by just telling you what, what's in, what this encompasses, and then comments will be followed by the President Martinez and uh, CAO Grant, Mr. Grant. Uh, first, just a couple of comments. This 2010 budget is basically a very conservative budget, but it does provide the critical service that, to the citizens that we all serve. So if you look at the uh, first page after your cover sheet, this is a summary of the 2010 budget. And you can see that it's made up of the general fund and all our special revenue uh, funds. And then if you continue on the second page, the operating budget continues with our debt service funds and our enterprise internal service funds. And then you have a subtotal of just our operating budget. So you look at the almost the middle column that says expenditures, you can easily see that the operating budget is $61,800,710 using $4.6 of our fund balances to equal the $46.5 million fund balance. Now, when you look at that fund balance, you know, it, it is a large figure, but re always remember that all of these funds are dedicated with the exception of the general fund and sales tax district number one. So you can only use the revenues in these funds that are dedicated for the purpose that the people put the dedication on. 
or for bond indentures, as it may be. Then after the operating budget, you have your capital budget. And if you go down that same column, expenditures, you can see that we, uh, our budget projects $44.4 million in expenditures in our capital budget for a grand total of our budget of $106,207,510. This is um, a net $20.3 million, 20 million over 2009. Our operating budget is $7.4 um, million less than 2009, and our capital budget is $27.6 million more than 2009. So that's the net plus 20. Point three million. The third page is a bar chart, and this is showing you our operating budget, their reven the revenue of the operating budget, and the expenditures that we just talked about. But it breaks it down in sources at the bottom. And the bottom, oh, if you look on your left-hand side at the 2000 amended budget, the sales tax at the bottom, the first one is sales taxes, that goes, that goes up the chart. So the, the blue is your sales taxes followed by your property taxes, and you can easily see that's our major sources of revenue. And then we have the fund balance that we're using that's required to, to balance to our expenditures. And then the intergovernmental revenues, interest, licenses, permits, fines, forfeitures, missile, other miscellaneous revenues, and other taxes such as beer and franchise fees. And then the very top bar is intergovernmental grants. So in, in 2009 amended that we're proposing, you can see that that bar goes up to it's 66.3 million compared to 66.2 million in the 010 budget. That's our revenue. And then on the right hand side is the operating budget's expenditures compared to 2009. And then once again, it starts with public works and goes up the chart. And you can see it's public works, drainage pro, uh, public works, and this is only the maintenance funds now. And then the road and bridge maintenance is the bread and health and welfare, and the largest be block being general government. That includes the judicial expenses and our legislative expenses. And then you'll see the little uh, aqua blue is uh, debt service payments in uh, 2009 versus 10. And then public safety is the uh, orange at near the top. That's our uh, fire districts, jail operations, and op uh, operations of emergency preparedness. And the second to top bar, the blue, is recreation and parish promotion, which is mostly our, our LSU Cooperative Extension Service that we promote, uh, fund. And then the very top bar is intergovernmental. So you can see that's where that... Uh, 7.4 million decrease from 09. You can see that clearly. 2009 amended was 69.2 million in expenditures, and 2010 is 61.8 million. And the next sheet is just showing you those figures if you want to go back and track each one individually without trying to see on the chart exactly where it is. The top is the revenue, operating revenue that just was depicted. And the bottom is the operating budgets expenditures by source. And then the fourth page is another set of board charts. Now, this is our capital budget. And on the uh, left-hand side is the revenues compared to 2009. And on the right hand is our capital budget compared to uh, 2009, the expenditures. And on the 2000 amended budget, you can see that the, uh, 09 is $19.7 million to 2010 is 40 million. And then on the expenditure side, 2009 amended is 16.8 million. And then our 2010 budget and our capital budget is 44.4 million. And then the next page gives you the figures once again per, per uh, type. And then the next bar chart set is just to give you a good indication of what you, the, uh, the parish council and administration spends on our public road system, the parish road system, and also our East Ascension drainage system. The left-hand side is our road and bridge maintenance combined with the construction. You can see in 2009, we're amending the budget to 12.8 million spent on our parish road system. And in 2010, 
We're, we anticipate spending $17.5 million on our drainage system on the east side of the parish. Uh, you can see in 2009, we, we amended it to $19.3 million, whereas in 2010 budget, we anticipate spending $28.6 million on our east side drainage, gravity drainage system. That is a bright spot in our, our budget. Uh, these revenues were, a, 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 it's very usual for you to spend your fund balance on capital projects. When you sell bonds, you know, like extension truck sold the 65 million, all that money was dumped in for future years expenditures. The same with the bonds we sold for our road system and just refunded or soon to be refunded. Uh, refinance rather we had a savings of about three hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars to the parish um, these these revenues that were either they were these capital projects are funded by either uh, bond sales grants or dedicated funds like your half cent sales tax two-thirds is dedicated to road construction so that's the source of these funds and again just the backup figures for that chart. And then the last thing in this, this uh, packet is the ordinance actually amending the 2009 budget and appropriating the year 2010 budget. We would ask that once we finish this discussion that you uh, call for an introduction of ordinance and a public hearing at your October 15th meeting and we would that public hearing and ordinance adoption will be considered and adopted at your November 19th meeting. That will give us ample time, not only you to, to review the budget, see if you have any issues or questions, which you know we're always available, either the president's office or my office to answer, or you know any questions you may have or discuss any issues or help you find whatever it is you, you would like to locate. Uh, and it also gives us time to meet the, the publication requirements that is required by the uh, Louisiana Budget Act and our Home Rule Charter. So right now I'd like to turn it over for some comments to President Martinez, who will turn it over to Mr. Grant. President Martinez. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, finances, uh, Gwen and her staff and everybody that was involved and uh, all department heads. Uh, we met with them on a continual basis. Uh, of course, every year they, they bring a wish list and uh, we look at it and we kind of pour it down quite a bit. Uh, this year, uh, we're not adding any employees other than at Lamar Dixon and uh, we do have a, a plan for Lamar Dixon. I'll be glad to uh, divulge that to you uh, in the near future. We, If you look at the budget, basically you're looking at about $100,000 uh, that's going to be transferred in general fund money only. Uh, hopefully we won't use that. Uh, we feel like that we can uh, certainly make things happen there and uh, get it going. And uh, I'll be glad to, at the next recreation meeting, uh, sit down with you and go over a plan. We uh, have put one together and uh, we think it's going to be very successful. So at this point, hopefully... Uh, we won't use any money, any general fund money, to operate Lamar Dixon next year. So uh, that being said, uh, if you look, the general fund is going to be down and cut uh, $2.189 million. Uh, it's about a 16% decrease. Uh, special revenues will be down 17.78%. Uh, uh, debt service is down 0.89. Uh, enterprise internal services are basically uh, what we've done. Uh, we've combined maintenance uh, to where we now we we charge each department uh, X amount rather than a percentage. We want to make sure that whatever's spent in that department comes from that department and comes from their budget. Uh, we've also done the same thing with fleet management. Uh, we've with everything, all the departments, uh, that budget's all going to be one big budget, and they'll, each department will be charged as they utilize the uh, funds. Uh, basically, uh, we think we can better track the money where it goes. I know there was some concern about that uh, in, uh, in drainage uh, talks earlier. Uh, we 
if you like, we can get better prices because now we can buy bulk. Instead of one department buying tires here and another department buying tires there, uh, we can uh, buy them in bulk and hopefully get better prices and save. Uh, I feel like we probably can save a couple hundred thousand dollars just on tires. So, uh, you know, those are the kind of things that we brought to the table uh, and, and hopefully can uh, enhance uh, our system and make it more efficient. Uh, capital budget, as Gwen said, $44 million. That's good news. Uh, you know, that's $11 million in road projects next year. Uh, two years ago, we didn't think we could do a road project. Now we can do an $11 million project. Uh, only bad thing about that one is on 73, uh, being told at the sewer there, we had uh, allocated a million and a half and I went ahead and added a little bit more into it because I, I thought it would cost more than a million and a half. But now I'm being told that uh, we're going to have to put the sewer line 16 feet down. It may end up costing us $4 million. So, uh, again, that's going to be a, a major hit to us uh, on a future road project next year. So, anyway, that's uh, that's one thing that, that's really good. All the rest of the money is not coming uh you know, it's grant money. Uh, we, we're getting a huge amount of grants this year, uh, about $18 million, uh, uh, not counting the uh, Gustav money. So, uh, you know, things are, uh, we're doing well in that category also. Let me, I'll just read this, this statement. Uh, at the 2010 operating budget of $61,800,710 reflects the effects of the current economy on parish finances. It's basically a standstill budget that reflects no new hires and an actual $7,373,370 in expenditures less from the 2009 budget. The budget anticipates a 10% increase in health insurance premiums. Hopefully we can get that down. Hopefully it will be 3%. Last year we were anticipating that and it came in 4% uh, below. So again, uh, when the insurance goes up, that's a pass along to our employees, and we certainly don't want to do that in these hard times. Uh, uh, and also, uh, we are mandated legislatively this year to pay 3.75% 3, 3 increase in employee contribution <coughs> in parochial retirement system contributions, which uh, is pretty much what we usually give them a cost of living raise, about 3%, and uh, now we're having that put up 3.75 in uh, just this in these contributions. This budget defers possible salary increases until mid-year, depending on the state of the economy and its effect on our revenues. In spite of our need to manage with reduced resources, we will move forward with, man with man management initiatives to improve efficiency, such as consolidation of fleet management, which I talked about, implementation of electronic timekeeping, impl implementation of revenue estimating, and continuation of vehicle leasing. The parish will undertake major new capital initiatives in 2010. The first is the implementation of the parish's community development block grant recovery plan. This will eventually involve the expenditure of 19370000 for projects that will allow the parish to better sustain itself in future natural disasters. The capital budget reflects the first $9 million of these funds. The parish will also begin the development of a parish-wide sewer system, the Department of Environmental Quality has awarded the parish $18 million in state re revolving fund loans. These funds will be used to build a regional treatment plant and discharge. This will begin the development of a multi-year parish-wide sewer program. These projects, along with an $11,507,800 investment in roads and $13,771,000 in major drainage improvements, represent a significant commitment to the parish's infrastructure priorities. The 2010 capital budget is proposed at $44,400,800. When we received the DEQ loan award, the parish's capital investment in infrastructure in 2010 will be approximately $62,600,000. So, again, it's, it's good news and bad news, but we are budgeting very, very conservative, conservatively as we did last year. Uh, I can tell you again that every fund will come in under budget for 2009 so uh, you know and what we've done is uh, even with overtime we we cut most overtime out unless it's a call out for an emergency uh, 
we reduced the number of computer replacements this year by 50 percent. We were going to uh, replace a, a significant amount of our computers, but we're going to going to scale it down. Uh, we scale down on implementation of new software pro programs, and uh, like I said, we're going to maintain our present workforce level, converting over time to reassignment of work hours. So uh, those are some of the cost uh, saving measures that uh, we're we're working with. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Cedric. And uh, as I said, I want to really thank. Uh, Gwen and her staff, they, I know they worked real hard, and Cedric uh, working with them and uh, all the department heads for putting this budget together. I think it's, it's good for the parish, and I think we're going to move forward with it. Mr. Grant. One's covered most things. I just want to hit some, some key points here that uh, we, we're, we're about to do $62 million worth of capital improvements with no new staff. We've we've got about as lean and mean as we we can get to to accomplish this. We're going to do 18 million dollars worth of sewer improvements next year, and 19 million dollars of capital improvements in the community development block grant area, in addition to the 11 million of, of roads and and with the drainage staff, the 13 million dollars of expected drainage improvements. This is a significant uh, burden that, that that we're going to place on staff. I think we can handle it. I think we've put the pieces in place to to, to pull this off. Uh, Thanks to the cooperation again with the community development plan of all the municipalities, and, um, and and I've kind of done an education program of our planning staff and um, and grant staff to, to help them understand the regula regulations that we're about to take undertake. I didn't want to leave this budget without you understanding what else we're going to be doing. Um, we've been working very long and hard on the the jail sewer project. It's out to bid. That's another project that will be underway next year. Um, we're going to continue to work. We have a hazardous mitigation grant program that's going to basically be doing hardening of buildings. It's another four million dollars of, of investment. So, uh, as we sit here in this bad economy and we sit here in this standstill budget, we're going to be making significant investments in our facilities and and and, and creating an ability for this government and the, 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 its facilities to sustain themselves in the future. But uh, I would suggest to you that we, we will be monitoring this very closely and coming back to you and suggesting to you when we've, we basically have done everything we can do, what will we have? We, we're there. We've cut the budget, the operating budget, $7 million from last year, and we're doing $62 million more of work. So at, at some point, you, you, you're pretty much at the end of what, what you can do. But uh, we, we feel very comfortable and confident that with the staff that we have in place that we'll be able to accomplish this work that um, what you'll see is, is, is major improvements being done in every area of this parish. We're, we're embarking on a very long journey here on sewer, uh, but we're making a significant investment of over $25 million in sewer in the coming years. So um, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be coming to you in all the committee meetings and, and going through all of these different aspects of this program with you. But um, we, we did what we had to do in this budget. Uh, it, it's very tight. But um, it's it's doable, and, and we will accomplish a great deal in in 2010 in this budget. And I just want to say that any during this time frame, if you want to come to our office, uh, we certainly would meet with you as less than a quorum or one or two or individually or whatever you want to do, and uh, go over this uh, budget. And any question that you have, feel free to call us and. Uh, set up a meeting. Uh, uh, maybe we can answer them over the phone. So uh, the door is open to you all if you want to come in and discuss it. And if you want to change anything, please let us know. Well, I will say uh, thanks as well to uh, this, this administration for, for and the staff for putting this together. Uh, at first glance, um, the the extra investment in, 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 in capital projects is uh, certainly something I want to see. I think we all want to see. I think the people are desperate for wanting to see um, and as far as the the revenues being uh, flat or, or, or for next year uh, I know that's a smart conservative thing to do there I'm just going to say I, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and hope we have a, a better year this year uh, next year than than this one and uh, the recovery pans out but I appreciate the approach of, of, of being tight and uh, and being smart about it so thank you um, 
Mr. Clouette. Yeah, I just want to uh, just basically on on the total budget, 09 versus 010 is the. Uh, well, I'd, I'd commented before that one thing of Ascension Parish is we have diversified to a point to where we basically got industry down around the 50 percent range, and uh, we've diversified. We got other other segments of, of income coming in in our tax base, and uh, just this morning in the paper. In the newspaper, we're talking about the, the economic growth in industry, and that you know, there's predictions of single-digit growth. Just it's it's, it's going to come back slow. So, uh, not a big boom out there right now, and uh, being real frugal right now is is a good thing to do. Yeah. You know, if something comes in our lap that'll that'll work, but uh, I think what we got right now is kind of stays in line with with what we're seeing in, in the area. Thank you. Okay. Other comments? Councilman Valentine? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, Parish President, I promised you 60 days. I got a few more days, so I'm going to ask Mr. Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lamar Dixon, um, how, how are we coming with uh, our citizens that uh, um, that stood here and promised this council and promised the administration that they would uh, give the, this parish uh, uh, money uh, in the amount of a million dollars for operation of Lamar Dixon. Are we going to be able to get that in time to get it in this working budget? Sir, I, th there have been efforts made to, at securing sponsorships that have borne fruit. Uh, I have not seen the efforts that, that you, you, you said materially. We just don't want that to... But, th but the budget you will see for Lamar Dixon will be one that has the right. revenue support I understand. And expenses. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later, but I just want to know how the efforts are to collect the money. Okay. So we'll all take this and uh, analyze the data and the numbers a little further. Uh, do we need a motion to accept this, or do we just have it introduced to the next council? Introduce the ordinance and call the public hearing at October 15th meeting. Motion. Motion introduced by uh, Councilman Todd Lambert, second by Councilman Bell. Anything else? Motion passes. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Todd Lambert, second by Councilman Randy Kluot. <laughs>